Good evening. Welcome. Thank you for being inquisitive enough to find out what it used to be like here in Nyawak, because Nyawak today is not what it was. Um, I thought about ratting my hair and um, doing all of that to have that 80s look, and then I decided I'm not there anymore. <laughs> so we will get going. Here we are with our poster that we had, and in the uh, 1970s. This was the uh, Hotel Livingston and what it looked like. It was raised, uh, R-A-Z-E-D, and the, uh, anti the Antique Emporium came there. So it, not everything stays the same. At the end of the block across the street, uh, in the 100 block was John Lockwood's antique store. This is the Lacey Farm on 83rd, North 83rd. As you will see, there was the farmhouse. The top one, I think the silo and barn that you see is probably uh, Ken and Cindy Hartman's, which is north near uh, Interstate uh, 119. Then the middle photo on the right, you can see the water tower. And it's very easy to see that there's nothing to the east of them either. We had uh, great volunteers with uh, Idell and Chuck Lineweber, uh, Line and um, they found out that they could get a free lunch at Longmont uh, Buffet if they proved that they had been married 50 years. So four, four different pictures here that they went on Valentine's Day. <laughs> this is the people who all had the property where Children's Park is. This office building was built on Paiute Avenue, which is in Morton Heights, the East Street in Morton Heights. It was built in 1980. And that was kind of like, oh my gosh, an office building. And so it was uh, quite a big deal for residents. This is across the street from that. Um, this is all open space. And uh, this is the east side of Paiute Avenue. We had the most outstanding and fun volunteer fire department. Biff is here. He can attest to that. He tells a story about uh, one time where the they got a call. They had to go east, which means going up Niwot Road. And little number 10 had uh, aged a bit. And he said he thought at one time <clears throat> some people walking on the sidewalk were going faster up the hill than the, <laughs> the engine was. One of the stories that I really love, though, is Cliff Tharp, who donated the license plate and the bumper stickers. He said that they got a call. It was 2 o'clock in the morning. And uh, so he and Tom Theobald ended up coming over to the garage on the south side of the Grange. And uh, they got in the engine. Cliff had the lights going. And uh, Tom said, why don't you turn on the sirens? And Cliff said, it's 2 o'clock in the morning. People are asleep. <laughs> Tom said, right. They'll know that their volunteer fire department is here. <laughs> Cliff didn't turn the sirens on. You all recognize engine number 10 if you've been to any parades lately. In 1982, Mountain View Fire came in and then they restored the engine and it actually runs faster now than it used to. <laughs> <laughs> we had the Easter egg hunt. Don Reeb is announcing uh, on the tennis courts at the high school here this age group goes here, this age group goes here, this age group goes here. And on the right are photos of his daughters at the event. But it was 44 years this spring. 
and Niwot Realty did this. Pat started it as uh, something to give back to the kids and parents in the community. And you see these tennis courts? That's where he was announcing. And you see all this grass? This is, right, is left field of the varsity baseball diamond. What is it now? It's the parking lot. This is the south side of the building, this, and that's where the parking lot is now. We did have a little controversial activity in Niwot. Uh, if you can read that there was the Ace of Hearts and the exotic nude dancing. So we contact, I contacted the Boulder County Sheriff's Office to see if anybody, they sent out a note to retired uh, officers and deputies. And one of them responded that they remembered that they were on that call. But they served, they didn't serve an eviction notice. They served alcohol related papers. And they didn't understand why they were serving alcohol related papers when we've got, you know, alcohol departments. So, you know, state alcohol did not serve them any papers, but they were gone then. So, so, so we had nostalgia days, 35 years. And uh, it was days with an S, and it was day. So there were different events. But this particular year was uh, Nostalgia Days. And on Friday night, Tony, who owned El Castillo Mexican Restaurant, organized the chili uh, contest. And um, that was his chili mobile. <laughs> and Evaldo probably has plenty of tales about that. Um, the winners of the chili contest that year were Dr. and Mrs. Meissner. <laughs> if you go to any chili contest, cook-off contest, it's serious business. Look at those witches. And here you've got Fat Daddy and Armadillo Annie. Flame be go, flame and go. And here we have Apache tear, Tears. <laughs> but the ultimate test at Chili Contest is how many people you get coming and tasting and voting for you. So that was always important. I think, I think we should have some of these events again. So here you are in Cottonwood, and you see um, Biff Warren's office there. And you see the flatbed trailer, which was the stage. But Niwot Youth Sports set up. And here they're having basketball toss. But do you notice all the chairs and tables behind them? And do you recognize any of the shops? So they're still there, standing. <laughs> So you have uh, a big festival like that, you got to have a dunk tank. So, so there was a dunk tank and there were tables filled with people. Some years it was all in um, Cottonwood and some years it, there, it was over here on 2nd Avenue. Yeah. But here in the bottom, um, the bottom left, that is Clarence Conalog on the fiddle. Pete Wernick of Hot Rise and all, FM, Dr. Banjo on the banjo, and Joan Wernick on the guitar. And Terry Rasmussen in the center. Oh, is that Terry in the center? Thank you for playing there. And this uh, photo here on the bottom right is not so significant with the characters who were in the parade and driving, riding circles in the unpaved Niwot Road. But you see this farm field? That's Johnson Farms, Burgundy. So a little bit has changed. And we had the teddy bear picnic. This was held at the Divine Lutheran uh, church at 83rd and Niwot Road. It was not a church event, 
that's where they held this picnic and community event. Lots of entertainment, face painting, tents, tables, food. And they did have a variety of entertainment for the kids, storytellers and uh, ventriloquists, and then they had the music. And you could go to the shade of the trees and uh, enjoy that, or the tent. And then if you had a teddy bear picnic, you got to have teddy bears. <laughs> it was time to join the membership drive for the Niwot Recreation Center. If you were a member, you could also have private parties in the swimming pool, and that's what this blue ticket is. There was a private swimming party, and uh, the young lady was going to go to Europe to study that summer, and uh, two of her friends organized it, and parents paid, and they had a swimming pool party. I, didn't, I did not remember until I looked at this that when I've gone into Bank of Estes Park, that that was the main entrance, but that was the front door. Was there a swimming pool in the basement? There, there was a swimming pool. It was 25 meter. Yeah. This is the um, Cottonwood a cottage a restaurant. It was one of a couple that were there on the corner of 79th and um, Niwot Road. Now there's the two-story brick building. There was 4-H, Niwot Nifties. And so do you know what the 4-H's, have you known what the 4-H's stand for? So, in the in eighty and eighty one, these ribbons were uh, one contestant, and it's a, both Boulder County Fair and State Fair. They were very active, and uh, they have they've been doing very well for many years. The uh, one of the things that 4-H teaches you, you have to have record keeping. So it's a very disciplined that you need to, if you're working with your animals, you need to record what you feed them and how you tend for them and care for them. And uh, this particular one is uh, cake decorating. I will let you have a little bit of time to find things here. This aerial was shot by a teacher at Niwot High School. And uh, Niwot was built in 73. It actually started construction in 72, but it was unfinished. So the students didn't go until 73, January 73. And um, in 83, they had to expand the uh, cafeteria and, I mean cafeteria, the auditorium and uh, big gym is here. The little gym um, over here was, uh, oops, where was it, where is it? Right there, was only um, junior high, middle, middle school now was junior high, regulation size. So they couldn't, you know, if they were in finals or they had any contests that, you know, they could play, they could go dual matches but they couldn't do any tournaments. They were not, reg it was not a regulation size gym. I don't know who the architect was, but, uh, but you will notice that um, the tennis courts that Don Reeb was talking about, or talking on, is here. Your baseball diamond is here. You have um, some growth in uh, Overbrook, and then there is one house on what would be become Gold Nugget Drive. We had a circus too. We had a lot of fun things. 
It was a, definitely a community. This was after the, after the Johnson Farm crop was gone, then the circus came in. I don't remember it except for one year, but I know it was here at least one year. We had a crash. We had train derailment. No fumes or anything like that. It derailed approximately where uh, Whistle Stop Park is at First Avenue. And it continued sliding along the tracks until it came to a stop where there were tracks still at uh, where the beat dump was. It didn't take out any buildings, didn't do any other damage. No one was hurt, but they did discover two hitchhikers on one of the freight cars. But the 11 cars went all that way and nothing was damaged. And guess who came to life? Don Reeb was community school director for the St. Vrain Valley School District. He worked out of both Niwot Elementary and Niwot High School, organized lots of community events. And one of the things he did one day, I think we should do some historic, you know, we should learn something about our place. Let's have a historical society. Very few people attended, but here we are today. We are collecting, preserving, and sharing Niwot history. So. This Niwot history and all of these slides are going into the archives, generously donated by um, the images. Um, by the people, by these people. Here is the completed school building, but it, it takes a little different advantage, uh, direction, so you see the fields a little differently from the, from the previous photo. A lot of dry land stripped farming. You remember these people? Yeah. Steve and Kay, Dan and Tim, their sons, opened Niwot Rental and Feed over 40 years here in town. Great family. And they closed just about a year ago. Shortly after, the sad news is that shortly after their retirement, Kay's cancer came back and she was gone quickly. You just, you work all those years and you look forward to retirement, and you finally get it, and then it's taken away. In 1984, November, the first lot was purchased in Somerset. The first lot. You see in the top photos, you can see the water tower. And uh, then, of course, down on the bottom left, you see that there were still crops being grown around there. That's one of the first houses, one of the early houses that was uh, moved in. They moved in in 85, and you don't see trees. The only place you see trees in Somerset in those days was along the ditch because they had water. And uh, there were horses grazing there. There was a favorite of my daughter's, Dusty, Clem's horse. He was a paint, and he stepped in a... a prairie dog hole and they couldn't uh, save him so they had to shoot him and I was driving down Niwa Road for some come down for something and I look in the rearview mirror both of my daughters just totally tears wet so for about two months I realized I could not go by where Dusty was so I had to go over to 52 and come down in 79. <laughs> You don't shoot the horse. <laughs> Here's an um, aerial from, of downtown. You notice that in the 80s, Dry Creek had houses there. Meadowdale had houses there. Of course, this is Neva Road. You have your uh, Franklin Street. You have your business district. But you have the farm field still. 
when Nostalgia Day started in 1967, we have a photo of uh, that, and the photo was taken from one of the front porches over on Neva Road, and big cornfield behind him. So you see Chris Finger's piano, and you see Pioneer Bank, and straight away, you see a cornfield, which is now Whistle Stop. This is kind of fun. You watch the building being built. Tim, you did a good job. That's <laughs> Perry and Roan building. I think Tim just stood on the front step of his building and took pictures across the street. I never worked. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, 364 was built in 1924. It was a residence for an Iwant Elementary School teacher, and she had Scotty dogs. And uh, it was sold mid-1980s and uh, converted into a restaurant. And there's lefties right there. Transferable development rights. This is NIWAT. This is why NIWAT is what, other than the community, but these are transferable lots and they were put into certain areas and clustered. It also is economic for water, sewer, power, electricity, cable. If if they're in a concentrated area. But Longmont was encroaching from the north and Boulder was getting ever so close from the south. And most of the people here didn't want to be just a small little part of, Niwa, of Longmont or Boulder. So they said, we've, we've got to keep them away. How do we keep them away? You keep them away by development rights so people can't develop there. And this is, uh, um, in fact, in the courthouse in Boulder, we are right there at the very first with two classic old photos. Um, but this is why we're separated. This is why we have this view. I drove to Greeley, the west side of Greeley, a couple summers ago because we like the roasted Italian chilies that this one Pope Farms does. They weren't coming to the fairgrounds anymore. And I thought, well, I'd been to Greeley, but I hadn't been to Greeley for maybe 30 years. So I decided to, I know how to get there, decided I'd go the country road and go up to Loveland and then just go east on Eisenhower. I was just white knuckled the whole way. I did not realize I did not, uh, you're leaving Loveland. And then there's a sign, welcome to Greeley. It was just buildings, solid. Came back through Perth and I and, uh, had to stop at A&W and get an A&W to just take a break and then I can get home. I got home, I see all these open area and I sat down and went right in, turned on my computer, sat down, sent a note to, you know, Biff, Tom, Celine, Pat, people that I knew had worked on the transferable development rights. This is why we have a view and we can look at, we can watch the storms come in over our foothills. We have a liquor store. <laughs> Were Helen and Ivaldo back here yet? Oh, okay. Um, they they uh, opened the first liquor store in 85, and this is uh, where uh, Shop Girl is now in Cottonwood. Helen got word of this new, this wine, it said it was called Big Blue. She thought, IBM's right over here. Why shouldn't we get some Big Blue? She didn't know what it tasted like. 
But so she ordered some big blue, set up this display, and then she learned short time later, big blue sued the winery for using big blue. <laughs> but, uh, but you know, down here in the bottom, uh, bottom right, you could ride, you know, if you were out for a horseback ride and you were on your way home, you could stop and get a beer or whatever. <laughs> you just had to hitch it to the, um, it was a Russian olive that was there. This is back on Paiute now, later in the 80s. It's still open. This is a little restaurant that people knew about. It had a wonderful uh, Sunday bar or whatever. They had names for all their Sundays. And uh, my daughters and I would come down and we would get the, ch I think it was called Chief Niwot. And it was kind of like, it was a Sunday with chocolate fudge and caramel and peanuts. And it was like a Snickers, you know, but we'd get three spoons and we would share that. And then there was hot rise and horses. The horses are being viewed from the, uh, the deck of an apartment there in Cottonwood. And hot rise, this was the poster and tickets from their last performance here in the Grange. And those of you who know Hot Rise, they also, you also know Dr. Banjo, Pete Warnick. What year and was that? Kim, do you remember exactly what year it was? 1986. 86? Yeah. Okay. 1986. And there's two t-shirts down on the bottom. So Vicki Dorvey was out for a walk the other day and she, was, she had uh, talked to me about this. She looked down at the sidewalk. Here, it, I don't know if you can see it that well. It says MW88. So we're deducting this as proof that that's when the sidewalk was put in <laughs> along Niwot Road on the north side of Niwot Road. So some energizing young person was making their mark in the world. <laughs> Here you are, 1989. So you still see all of the open space. Here's the water tower still. But you see some development starting in Somerset. And now here you have um, Gold Nugget and the rest of that development there. You still see the sewer department over here, but you don't see any of those, uh, the baseball field, softball field, tennis courts, soccer field, and Morton Heights is still there. The elementary school is there. So they were so crowded over in there first, they decided to get a second one. So they start, They renovated the, uh, what was originally a snack shack, I think, and then it was a little cafe. And that's Helen and Evaldo there with the keys to the shop. We have photos of, of the current liquor store area and Reverend Taylor's being raised. But he had, he had a two-story blue home right behind this. So houses were preserved and moved here to Niwot. So they took it off the foundation in Boulder and moved it out and moved it here, set it on a new foundation. Here's another home that came from Boulder. Santa came on the train. This was at the intersection of Niwa, of Second uh, Avenue and at the tracks. And he would get off and he'd visit with people there. And uh, then either he would walk down the street to shops or where he was going to light the Christmas tree um, or the holiday tree. 
or else he would get in the uh, fire engine and they would take him. And here's the fire engine. But you can see that the train uh, left him and took off. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how he got out of town, but uh, <laughs> he comes back every year, so. <laughs> yeah. So back in those days, uh, we did not have a tree, a community tree, planted in the ground. So residents would volunteer their trees and they would cut them off. They'd tether them down for our gentle winds around here and uh, they would have tree lighting. Here's a, another place. Look at the name. Can you see the name on the, of the cafe? Why? W-H-Y not, not like the cafe today. But that's the Bader House, and antiques were in the Colterra building. These are a couple of postcards that were vote donated by people. And there was a great pumpkin party. Another thing that Pat Murphy started. And you'll notice in the bottom uh, right, that was the brick XL building now. And uh, it was a warehouse and mobile home supply and repair. But the train missed it. Yeah, he, he was uh, quite the man. And uh, the photo of him is he was giving a lecture here at, at uh, the Historical Society, a buzz about bees. And Tom um, was one of the founding people of the Boulder County uh, Beekeepers Association. He had Tom's Corner was on their website. And uh, the old recorder, um, we have a newspaper today called Left Hand Valley Courier that comes out on Wednesdays. The stories I've heard about the recorder was that it came out when it got enough information to be printed <laughs> and to be published. I don't know for sure, but this is 89. And that was one of the notes from the bee yard. He, he wrote columns for newspapers. He is sorely missed. But we do have a Honey Bee Festival September 16th. 16th. Saturday, September 16th. This is before. That's just a gentle rain. And the building was the uh, Niwot Auction House. It was there for many years. Then it moved over into Cottonwood. That was normal, be it rain, snow melt, or the Hinman ditch overflowing. These were the streets. Why would you come to Niwot? <laughs> yeah. Look at that. You didn't have sidewalks, you didn't have anything, you had mud. But there's a lot of people who stuck it out. This is the bid for the drainage project. For, and then it was connected with the street being paved too. Boulder County shared that. It was really kind of nice of them. I don't remember um, seeing the Grange being painted yellow, but that's what, <laughs> what their cover of their bid proposal has it. But you also see that the street is all muddy on, on their proposal. There you go. That's a hole in the ground. And isn't it ironic that this was in 93, and here we are, 2023, and this week was supposedly they were going to do roto milling and repaving, but it's next week. So we escaped the bullet just because Mother Nature helped us out.
This next is standing at Franklin, looking east to the 200 block, and then standing at Frank, turning around, standing at Franklin, looking west, and you see the 100 block. It was a kind of a big deal. Looks like we're getting there. Things are happening. We're getting streets. Look at that. We have a sidewalk. And voila, it's done. Isn't that cool? Good job, Mr. Wise. <laughs> and I think this is another thing we should have again. Have a street fair with antiques. Wouldn't we get a lot of people if we had something like that? It was very popular, but you can see that the streets are in. I think it would be a great community event. 104 Second Avenue was a vacant lot for many, many years. It was right next to the National State Bank building. Niwot Real Estate was there and Pat owned the lot, and there'd be craft fairs there. People would contact them, they'd bring them. They'd just have a street vendor, have a patio. Um, people would just bring their lunch, sit. And uh, that's Chris Clatt in the bottom. He's got a grill out there. I don't know who was coming to dinner, but he was grilling something. Here's that crew. Niwot Real Estate was established in 1988, but Morton and Morton was before Niwot Real Estate, and that was Howard Morton and his family, and Pat worked with them. So that her business grew out of his. Next door was Yankee Doodle Bookstore, and uh, then in the uh, blacksmith shop was Whistle Stop. It was a consignment for arts and crafts, and uh, it was in was in uh, Cottonwood originally. And when the blacksmiths opened uh, its doors for rent, then they moved over here because they were getting too crowded in the shop they had in Whistle Stop. I'm mean, in Cottonwood, so it was over here. And that's Celine waving to us at the bank. If some of you would like to come up and say a word, I would like you to come up to the microphone. Just tell us what you remember. This is Evaldo. Evaldo and Helen at the liquor store. Good evening. Uh, thanks for coming. Um, I'll concentrate a little bit more on second... Second Avenue, the second block uh, between um, Franklin and uh, the intersection with Niwot Road. Um, we, we, ha we purchased the property right at the intersection of Niwot Road and uh, Second Avenue. That was a, it was a two, two lot parcel, one of which was the um, original homestead for uh, Reverend Taylor who had the grocery store here, and he was one of the uh, individuals who established uh, Niwot. One of, the, one of the stories we like to tell our, our company and, and our family was that the property that we purchased had to have been the lowest part of Niwot. <laughs> Whenever it rained, whether it was just moderate to heavy rain, and I'm not exaggerating when I tell you that we had at least a 14-inch collection of uh, water in that, uh, that little triangular piece of property. Um, we have uh, several pictures of people uh, kayaking <laughs> on our property, um, kids doing uh, canoeing, canoeing on there. Um, and, and we knew that 
whenever, about this time of the year, when it was either snow or rain, or both, we had to go out and prepare ourselves with enough sandbags so that we could bring them in, put them up against that, uh, our building so that uh, the water wouldn't get in or a minimal amount of water would get into, into, into the building. Um, and, and again... Hinman Ditch was just across the street from right. them too. Um, uh, we were there when the new streetscape was just a, an idea, a, a concept. Um, we were there when we developed it, and uh, when I say we, many of the people that were part of that group are sitting here tonight. So uh, it didn't just happen. It was, uh, first of all, you had to sell the idea. Then you had to sell a, a concept that yes, it was possible for Niwat to, to have paved streets, sidewalks, uh, uh, and all those amenities that go with, with a community that we love. Um, so um, uh, with that, I'll simply tell you that, hey, thank you for being here. So Baldo and a bunch of other people are really the ones responsible for forming the lid in Niwot and collecting what was then a half percent sales tax. That was the maximum allowed. Um, and it took until 2010 to pay that off. The county paid about a third of it and the lid paid the rest. We went back to the state legislature three times, I think, to amend the statute to increase the amount to 1%. And then we got 1%, and then we had to change the statute so that you could do more than just build a road and a drainage system. So now you can do events and promotion and marketing, all of which the LID does now. But these guys were the ones that started. There was no LID advisory committee until 2008 because that's when it went from a half percent to a full percent. And the county was kind enough to let us keep that extra half percent and start doing other things and didn't make us pay down the debt. So the debt was paid off and we did the burning ceremony to, that's right. And we by golly, the we did. Um, the original amount was what, 200, 250, 280,000? 775,000. 775,000. <laughs> and it was all paid out of your um, tax money, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, sales tax. Yeah, the lid revenue started out at about fifty thousand a year. It's close to three hundred thousand now. Keep in mind that's one full percent, but it's gone like that over the years. So. Do you have something else you want to talk about? Um, a couple of things. You know, Scott and Pam. I don't know if anybody else is here that was on the fire department, but you know, those were great days. And this was the fire station. It was volunteer. Tom Theobald was the fire chief. Uh, that you saw pictures of Tom. Um, there's a button on the wall, and when you got a call, you came down. First person drove the truck, second person rode shotgun, third person drove the second truck, fourth person rode shotgun. But what you did is you raised the, the doors, and if the call was on the other side of the diagonal, you hit that button, and it tripped the light. And you had to be ready to go because you had to get through that light before it changed again on you. you know. And speaking of the railroad, I mean, the railroad was always starting fires along the diagonal because they didn't maintain the trains. And one day, they started a fire, and the fire department was out there putting it out. And Phyllis Seberg happened to have the hose as another train came by. And Phyllis just kind of raised that nozzle and shot it into the engineers they were not happy <laughs> they stopped the train they called the sheriff but the sheriff who had been out here on all these calls in the past told him you know i think you guys need to clean up the uh the trains and just move right along <laughs> so they didn't do anything it was probably was a good thing it was a woman doing that but 
So you guys probably remember a whole lot more fire department stuff, but until they built the new station up there, everything ran out of. And the, the fire department was really one of those things in the community. They did the chili supper once a year. And that was up at the elementary school for a while. I think it was in the Grange a few times. But you would go out on the trucks with not the sirens necessarily, but certainly the lights through the neighborhoods and sell tickets. And the, the line was, you come to our chili supper, we'll come to your fire. <laughs> and there were other stories too. I remember one time the, the call came in the middle of the night, January, structure fire on Main Street. I had my office where the Bader house is. I'm thinking, oh my gosh. So I come racing down, everybody's down here. Turns out it's a shed behind what is now Niwot Real Estate, or was, it's Porchfront Homes now, but it was Niwot Real Estate. So that was the only thing on fire. But there's a fire hydrant there and it had snowed. And we're out there with this big old wrench trying to open the hydrant so we can get water. And we couldn't budge it. And somebody finally brushed off the snow. It was an odd thing fire hydrant that turned the other way. <laughs> Nobody knew that. So, one other thing I'd mention too is, because we didn't have it on here, but a lot of you old timers will remember that ball fields in Niwot that were used by Niwot Youth Sports were on the corner of 83rd and Neva. There were three fields there and they were borrowed fields from the developer of Johnson Farm, who we thought we might have them a few years. I think we had them 22 years because they, the bank, the developer went bankrupt and we kept stalling and they took one for a detention pond when they built some houses, still had two. Then finally there was no field at 83rd and Niwot Road. That was just field, empty field. So Niwot U Sports went to the county and said, we're losing these fields. We need a place for kids to play. And they said, well, you know, this is supposed to be passive recreation. We don't do active recreation. We said, look, we will build it. You just let us do it. They said, well, I don't think it's in the approved plans. They couldn't find the approved plans. <laughs> but we found a plan that showed a ball field on that site. <laughs> Honest to God, we found it. We didn't create it. But so we got, and then we find out that they were collecting $300 from every building permit in Johnson Farm for the park development. But that fund was not segregated. We found that in the development agreements. So we said, look, you got money, we need money. You buy the materials, we'll build it. And that's what happened and that's how we got Left Hand Valley Grange Park, which was named at the request of Royce Johnson, who was the Johnson of Johnson Farms. Royce was an old baseball player, but you notice it's Left Hand Valley Grange because he wanted to include in the name more than just Left Hand Grange, Altona, other ones. So that's why it's Left Hand Valley Grange. And Left Hand is one word, whereas yeah. the Grange is Left Hand. So. so that's how the first ball field came about that is permanent. So that's enough. going to be a little dangerous to let me have a microphone but uh, since Royce Johnson was was brought out uh, we, we moved the house that you saw there that is over here on Niwot Road just in the next block in 1982 and my wife Terry at that time was doing home health care and she cared for Royce Johnson in in his final days so uh, he, he was a really important um, figure around here. Uh, and while we're on the subject of Terry, when I met Terry, she was putting on square dances in this hall, in this room. And they went on for several years until they were simply too successful and had to move on. Uh, we ended up uh, various places, Peggy's Hilo for, for a while, uh, at the uh, uh, what Pleasant View, Pleasant View Grange, mm -hmm. uh, for for a while, and 
Terry has been putting on dances like that for tw two dances a month for over 40 years. Right. So um, si since I'm the... Uh, since I'm the guy know, known for moving houses, I have one more comment on, on a house move, and that is before I even moved here, about 1979 uh, maybe or 80, I worked for the County Housing Authority and uh, was helping people uh, renovate houses. And one of my clients was down here um, she was the older Mrs. Bennett. Now, Lois Bennett still lives out here on the corner of Franklin and, and Niwot Road. And the lot just this side of that, where the big yellow house is now, is where the older Mrs. Bennett lived. And her husband, uh, the, the house they lived in was sort of moved in. Her husband had found uh, a, a big old chicken coop and dra dragged it in here. And they had made that their home for a very long time. And and so even before I was in Niwot, I was associated with another moved in house. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> Scott, do you want to come to the microphone so they can hear you? So. No, that one. <laughs> I'm corded up. <laughs> so Pam and, I, Pam and I moved here in 78 uh, and immediately got recruited to be in the uh, fire department with Tom and Biff and Barbara and, and, and a ton of people. The, the, the folks were all so nice. And we lived over on 265 Third Avenue at, the, at that time, uh, 265 Third Avenue. And, and one of the things that was unique at that point was that at the end of the street was this huge field. And, and we could walk over to Tom's and you could walk all the way, all the way to Overbrook, really. There was nothing between the end of Second Avenue. Sorry, and, use both microphones? This microphone is for the record, video recording. That's Good. for the house. Thank you. So, uh, so we had a, a great time uh, with our kids and with uh, community members uh, playing in that field. Uh, the kids would dig, build forts, and we would, you know, ride bikes and and, and do all those things. Um, so, so those were great memories until uh, until the the toll and the Johnson Farm came in and and, and built it up as 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 you can imagine. So. Um, the other things that I recall uh, at, at one point in the community association when we were starting to look at at the encroachments of Boulder and Longmont and then and then also seeing how, how uh, Louisville and Lafayette and everything was just starting to have to fight to, to grow to, to preserve themselves and NIWAT had the opportunity with with the sanitation district and the water district that we didn't have to leap and grow and, and start flag polling and doing so we, we kind of consolidated and one of the things that if I if I recall and Biff can correct me was at one point there was a, a big mall proposal that was going to go across the diagonal from Niwot a huge shopping mall so that kind of got everybody's attention and and so we we started into this thing where we could reward the farmers by offering them to the, the ability to transfer development rights and make some money off of their properties without having to sell to the developers they could move those those rights into this area and all the way out to uh, to um, 95th I think is where it was right yeah um, so those were those were um, kind of the the panic times when you could see you could see Boulder and, and Longmont leaping down the diagonal towards us so credit to Biff and C Celine and and the Boulder County Commissioners who helped us kind of put all that in place and, and make it work. Um, the, the great times, Pam and I, we were just over on, on 3rd Avenue and our great memories were we could put the kids to bed and come over here and see and watch Hot Fries for a while and every time they'd finish a song, one of us would run back over and see that everything was fine. <laughs> but, but the opportunity to do that and, and be a part of that, that, that community and, and all these great people. Uh, I hope everybody appreciates that. The uh, Niwot Men's Club was one of the first uh, groups that started doing things. They kind of grew into the fire department, the far volunteer fire department. And uh, Mike Hollyback, I don't know if some of you know uh, Mike Jr., who is with uh, Satir, Last Man on Earth. He will kill me. Um, anyway, his dad was the one person in that group who had actually had firefighter training. 
so he worked and, and uh, taught everybody else. And just recently, when we were cleaning out the garage, we found um, all the codes for different fires and, and everything, so we have that in the archives too, which was wonderful. Thank you all for your patience. We will have a lecture on coins in August, but in the meantime, there's plenty of stuff going on here in, in Naiwa. Please make yourselves known and walk around and visit all the shops. Thank you for coming. Thank you.